This is EC201 lecture 33. So far we have seen four active devices, the bipolar transistor and two kinds of them that is the NPN transistor and the PNP transistor. We have also seen the MOS transistor, the NFET and the PFET and the corresponding NNP devices are complementary devices in the sense that you know you can do attractive things like uh, make active loads and things like that. The only uh, piece of the puzzle which is still left is the so called an ideal of Let's now spend some time taking a look at what should be there inside this triangle and as we already know if this is VA and this is VB, V out is supposed to be some large gain A, ideally infinity, times VA minus VB. We have seen that you never use the op amp in, in open loop. It is always used as a as the forward amplifier in a negative feedback loop. Once the op amp is embedded inside a negative feedback loop, what can, can you make any comment on VA and VB? If the op amp is embedded inside a negative feedback loop, then VA will be approximately equal to VB. Now why do I say approximate and not exactly equal? If A is not infinity, then VA minus VB can't be zero. It will be some finite value. In a practical op amp, VA will not exactly be equal to VB. Depending on the value of this gain A, you know it can be a few micro volts, a few nano volts. The question now is, the job we have at hand in trying to figure out what we must put inside this triangle to make it function in this fashion is the first thing to do is to be able to find some circuit way of finding some gain K times VA minus VB where VA minus VB is very small. So, any ideas on how we might be able to do this? So, one suggestion of uh, how we, one might be able to do this is the following, which is we already know, for example, that the current in the collector, for example, is IS exponential VB minus VE by VT. All right. So the suggestion is why don't you make this one of these guys and why, why don't you make this the other of these guys. So any objections or any comments on that approach? We know that if we finally embed the op amp in a negative feedback loop, VB will be approximately equal to VE, which means that the difference will be very very small, which means that the quiescent current that is possible inside the transistor is going to be extremely small. If the quiescent current is very small, the GM is very small. If the GM is small, the gain will be small. You understand? That makes sense? All of you said VCVS. So, in other words, you want to be able to sense not just one voltage, but the difference between two voltages and generate a third voltage which is not dependent on just the absolute values of these voltages, but on the difference between the two. And if you want to sense voltages, ideally what would you want? You would prefer that any circuit that does this must have a infinite input impedance. And another thing that I want to point out is that uh, you want things to be as symmetric between VA and VB as possible. For example, that rules out this altogether simply because the way the, uh, the so called amplifier looks for VB is different from the way it looks for at this terminal. You understand? The input impedance here is different whereas here it is completely different and so on. So, 
Before we go there, I will also point something else out to you which you already know, but I will just refresh your memory. If, if I want to find VA minus VB, I can express VA minus VB in this seemingly roundabout manner. I can write VA as VA plus VB by 2 plus VA minus VB by 2 and I can write VB as VA plus VB by 2 minus VA minus VB by 2. This component that is VA plus VB by 2 represents the average of the two quantities and is called the common mode voltage or the common mode signal and by the same token what do you think this is called? VA plus VB by 2 rep represents the stuff which is common to both signals VA and VB. So, what must this represent? This is obviously called the differential mode signal. And what are we interested in? Finding VA minus VB and amplifying it is equivalent to just amplifying which, more, which component of these signals? It is equivalent to amplifying the differential mode signal. Uh, to summarize the discussion, any two voltages VA and VB can be decomposed into the sum of a common mode component and a differential mode component. This has got nothing to do with analog circuits at all. Just like any two numbers can be expressed as the sum of the average plus the difference by 2 and the average minus the difference by 2. You understand? So, in the specific task of trying to amplify VA minus VB, we don't really care about the average, that's what I'm saying. We are only interested in the difference. We know that in a practical op amp, when you put this as a part of a negative feedback loop, what do you think will happen to uh, VA and VB? The two of them will almost be the same. So, I can write VA as VCM plus delta V. Alright? Where CM stands for the common mode part of the signal and delta V stands for the differential mode part of the signal. Similarly, VB can be written as VCM minus delta V. Alright? And our job is to produce some large number times delta V. That is the important. Okay? And as I said in practice, this delta V is going to be a very small quantity. That I have rephrased the problem in these terms. Can anybody make a suggestion on what uh, I would be able to do? It, you can think of this as a quiescent value plus an increment and VB being equal to a quiescent value minus an increment. If you want a lot of gain, what would you do? What we want is K times VCM plus delta V, right, minus VCM minus delta V. This is what we are trying to get. And simplistically I must say, hey, let me do this one at a time. I will try and do do it one at a time. So, if I manage to find this and I manage to find this, how will I find the difference between the two? If I have two voltages and if I want to find the difference, what will I do?
you connect them in series in the in an anti parallel fashion or you take if both of these are referred to ground if you look at the voltage between these two voltage sources you will get the difference okay so it is quite straightforward so let's try this out and so what circuit do you know i mean let's let's do it with bipolar so what circuit do you know which will give you a large increment gain i mean with respect to delta v can you think of one specific single transistor circuit which will give you a large voltage gain what amplifier structure gives you a large incremental gain when the common emitter all right so vcm plus delta v if it is applied to the base i by i supply the bias using some current i not this is vcc this is the out is there all the rest of it or is there something i forgot the emitter must be incrementally grounded so what should i do put a big capacitor at the emitter and by the same token if i want to amplify vcm minus delta v what should i do so what i could do would be vcm minus delta v vcc this is i know what is the quiescent voltage at these nodes it is simply vcc minus i not r and the same thing holds for what is the incremental voltage at this node button minus gm r delta v all right and what is uh, the the incremental voltage here is plus gm r does it make sense all right and let's take a look, closer look at this and see if there is anything redundant here do you guys see anything redundant here let's uh, take a look at this node and this node what is the quiescent value at both these nodes it is the what is the quiescent value it is the same but what is it when when i say quiescent i mean the delta v is zero but but put v a equal to v b and uh, put them on here the quiescent value at this point must be v c m minus v b nominal which is 0.65 volts and the same thing must be there here what is the incremental value of the voltage here the quiescent value is the same for both guys it's vcm minus 0.65 incrementally this is grounded so in principle what can i do the same thing is there this is also has a quiescent value of vcm minus 0.65 and it is also incrementally grounded so is there something i can do to both these nodes i can short them and then i can say hey i say one capacitor that here this is equivalent to i mean current i think the current is also parallel to y let's try and do the usual thing once you have a circuit we replace the transistor by smoothing and equivalent and do all the math let's try that <laughs> so i replace the transistor vcc will become incremental ground so with this what will happen to these current sources open circuit give me a couple of minutes here before i get rid of this stack what happens to this chart here it just becomes the source of voltage of value delta v this becomes the source of value minus delta v 
dry or the means that way. And so this is our pipe, this is GM to uh, let me call this delta V, let me call this Vx. What should this current source be? GM times minus delta V. Does that make sense? So what do we see with respect to Vx? Just look at this. What is that? The stuff inside this uh, wing is the same as the stuff inside the other wing. There is symmetry here. And when you have symmetry, what can you do? If you have a network with two n elements and it's symmetry, then you can simplify analysis by getting rid of half the number uh, elements. The two symmetric halves and one is excited by delta V, the other one is excited by minus delta V. So the current in this branch if there is some current flowing like this in this branch, what must be the corresponding current in the, in the, in the symmetric branch? It must be equal and? In the, okay. It must be in this direction because the, the sign of the exciting voltage is negative. If the sign of the exciting voltage was positive, then what would happen? They, they, they go in the opposite direction in this diagram because of the diagram. Interesting thing. What do you think this potential will be? Zero. This potential got to be zero. So if this potential got to be zero, then we need the capacitor. The whole idea of keeping the capacitor, uh, putting an infinite capacitor there was to make sure that if this node potential tries to change, the job of this infinite capacitor is to make sure that the incremental change at this node is zero. On taking a closer look at the circuit, we see that, hey, because of symmetry and because we have excited both these symmetric halves in, in opposite directions, the incremental voltage at this node to begin with was, we just said that because this half is symmetric with the, is the same as this half and I excited it in opposite directions, it must follow that voltage Vx must be zero, which means that the incremental voltage here is zero to begin with, so I do not need the infinite capacitor, so I can actually get rid of it. Does that make sense? As far as circuit analysis is concerned, I can, understanding that Vx is 0, I just put the ground there. So, Vo1 and Vo2, if I denote them, Vx is 0, I can get rid of this chart and I can get rid of it. So VO1 must be equal to minus GM R delta V and VO2 which is the incremental voltage of the second collector can be given by plus GM R Based on this small signal observation, what can we do with the original circuit? There is something else we can get rid of. We can get rid of the big capacitor. The reason being that when you excite both of these guys, when this guy moves up, this guy moves down. So this node remains at the, as long as these are small signals, when this guy moves up by a small amount and this guy moves down by a small amount, this chap stays at the same potential, so you do not need a big capacitor there to ensure that this stays at a constant potential. So you can get rid of the capacitor and redraw this this way. 
I combined the two current sources into one, I got rid of the capacitor and what I have is a circuit like this. Because the circuit is symmetric, what VA sees and what VB sees are, are the same thing and the Poisson values this node are VCC minus I naught R and the difference between these two nodes is given by 2 GM R delta V. So delta V is positive, this guy goes down by GMR delta V, this guy goes up by GMR delta V. So the difference between the two is 2 GMR delta V. Spend some more time looking at the circuit in more detail. To summarize how we came up with it, this is the following. I mean, I anticipate that the two voltages V A and V B will be very close to each other. Then, in any case, I can express any two voltages as V C M plus delta V and V C M minus delta V. In the specific case that we are considering, we know that delta V is going to be a small signal. We need to do is amplify the difference between V A and V B. So, in other words, we are only interested in gaining up the delta V. We don't really care about the common um, okay? mode. And then we say, hey, if delta V is a small signal, I know already how to build a small signal amplifier, and that's the common emitter amplifier. If, I'm, if I decide to use NPA transistors, what I would do to get the largest possible increment gain is to use a common emitter amplifier. So, I build a common emitter amplifier with bias stabilization like this. I build another common emitter amplifier with bias stabilization like this. To one I apply VCM plus delta V, to the other I apply VCM minus delta V. And the difference between these two outputs must give me so that the voltage between these two guys it must give me what I want. Then I say the two emitter nodes were at the same Poisson potential and were not moving incrementally, so nothing is lost if I short these two guys. And I can eliminate one capacitor. And the next thing to do is to say, okay, let me try and uh, you know figure out the incremental gain and incremental input impedance and all this other stuff. And I notice that when I draw the incremental equivalent circuit, this gives me a symmetric linear network where there is mirror symmetry about this central axis here. So, whatever is happening here, if this is excited by a voltage delta V and this is excited by a voltage minus delta V, if I find any two nodes corresponding symmetric paths, if this is doing this, the, the corresponding node in the other symmetric path is doing the opposite thing. So any node which is on the axis of symmetry must, must not be doing anything. The common emitter node or the emitter coupled node as this is called, so this node is the node where both the emitters are connected together, uh, connecting things together is in electrical engineering parlance or circuit parlance is often called coupling. This node is the emitter coupled node and the emitter coupled node we see from this incremental circuit analysis that the emitter coupled node is not moving incrementally at all which makes this big large capacitor here redundant and can be eliminated. And once you eliminate this uh, capacitor, I mean, uh, we also notice that in the value 2 current sources of I0, we can represent them as a single current source of value 2 I0 and this is what you end up with. So we will definitely study the properties of this, but this is what is called the The differential amplifier, often called the differential pair. It's a symmetric structure, you have two transistors, and the basic idea was to try and amplify the difference between two signals. And why do we need to amplify the difference between two signals? We are interested in creating negative feedback loops all the time, where 
we are comparing one voltage with another voltage and try to kick somebody else uh, to do his, his or her job. That's why we are interested in finding the difference between the voltages. That's a good break point, so I will stop here. I'll see you.